Hello, I'm Shiva Kaladindi. I'm a pediatric emergency physician, and today I'm here to talk about a top article in pediatrics. Let's begin with a case study uh, that we can relate to. You are a primary care physician for a three month old baby presenting to your clinic. Baby was seen at an urgent care two days ago for excessive crying and was started on a proton pump inhibitor for reflux. Baby is healthy, appears well, feeding well, and growth parameters are appropriate. You're considering whether to continue the acid suppression therapy. So let's see what the current evidence would suggest when you're considering whether to continue the proton pump inhibitor therapy. Which of the following statements are true? A placebo controlled trials have demonstrated that PPIs relieve symptoms related to gastroesophageal reflux in infants. A second statement is the use of PPIs in pediatrics has remained relatively stable over the past couple of decades. Or PPIs reduce the risk of acute gastroenteritis, community acquired pneumonia, and Clostridium difficile infections in children. And the final statement is there is a positive association found between PPI use and childhood fracture incidence. So let's review a current article to see if we have some guidance and to see which of these statements are true. So a article which was recently published in Pediatrics, the title was Early Acid Suppression Therapy Exposure and Fracture in Young Children. This was published in July 2019. Why is this important? So we know that acid suppression therapy, including proton pump inhibitors, the H2 receptor antagonists, are commonly prescribed for treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Especially in pediatrics, there has been noted to be a fourfold rise in the increase of prescriptions from 1999 to 2003, and there's actually a doubling of prescriptions from 2004 to 2008. And we also know that in adult studies, PPIs have been associated with decreased bone mass and increased rate of fractures. However, it's unclear whether this is true in infants and children, or there's limited literature in this regard. So that brings us to the question, what is the association of acid suppression therapy use and fracture risk in otherwise healthy infants given the high prescription rates in this population? So let us see how this study was structured. So for this study, a retrospective cohort of children born between 2001 and 2013 were considered. So there were about a million kids that were eligible for this study. Uh, of the database that was used was the military healthcare system. The intervention of interest was the children that were prescribed proton pump inhibitors or and H2 receptor antagonists during the first year of life. And the comparison group were children who were not prescribed any acid suppression therapy during the first five years of life. They uh, excluded kids with child maltreatment, non-accidental trauma, uh, conditions like osteogenesis imperfecta, and cholestasis. The outcome measure of interest were fractures that occurred before and after the age of one year. The secondary analysis also looked at the time of initiation of acid suppression therapy and the duration of acid suppression therapy to see its effect on uh, fractures. So here is a quick look at the demographics of the children prescribed and not prescribed the acid suppression therapy in the first year of life. As you can see, there were about 850,000 kids that were enrolled in the study, out of which about 100,000 kids received acid suppression therapy in the first year of life. And about 750,000 kids did not receive any acid suppression therapy in the first year of life. And here are the results. It was noted that there was an increase in hazard risk ratio for fractures in kids who received PPI use or were prescribed uh, proton pump inhibitors or a combination of proton pump inhibitors and H2 receptor antagonists. And when it was plotted on a graph where the cumulative incidence of fractures was plotted ac across the number of years, it was noted that there was a clear increase in the risk of fractures in kids that were prescribed proton pump inhibitors or a combination of proton pump inhibitors and H2 receptor antagonists. 
And when we come to the secondary analysis, it was noted by the authors that the longer the duration of therapy, as it's illustrated when the therapy was greater than five months, that resulted in a higher risk of kids having fracture, hazard ratio of fractures, suggesting there might be a dose duration dependent effect as well. And so was the case when both H2 receptor antagonists and the PPIs were used. And when the time of initiation of therapy was considered, kids that were started on therapy in the first six months of age were noted to have a higher hazard ratio of having fractures in that group as compared to when started later in their infancy. So that brings us back to the case study where you were considering whether you need to continue acid suppression therapy or whether you would consider acid suppression therapy. We know that placebo controlled trials have demonstrated that PPIs do not relieve gastroesophageal reflux in infants. Many a times the physiologic newborn reflux and crying uh, sometimes may be inappropriately treated with acid suppression therapy. We know that the PPI use in pediatrics has significantly increased over the past few decades. And studies have shown that PPIs actually increase the risk of gastroenteritis and community acquired pneumonia and Clostridium difficile infections in children. However, this recent study among a large group was noted to be a positive association found between PPI use and childhood fracture incidence. So let's see as to how is this relevant to practice for your practice. So the study findings in a study of almost a million children, acid suppression therapy during the first year of life was associated with increased fracture hazard in children. Fracture hazard increased with duration of acid suppression therapy use with and with younger age of initiation of acid suppression therapy, either with PPIs alone or in a combination of H2 receptor antagonists. So how is this relevant to practice? While it might be perfectly reasonable to consider acid suppression therapy in kids who are having significant gastroesophageal reflux disease, practitioners should be aware of the potential for fracture when considering treatment as compared to using utilizing lifestyle changes or weightful watching. Also, if acid suppression therapy is necessary, providers should limit the prescriptions to a single drug when possible and limit the duration of therapy when possible. Thank you, and I hope you find this information useful in your practice.